someone who is not a politician and not a multi-zillion billionaire, a guy from Montreal who decided to do something. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> They mistakenly called me the Jewish Schindler, a title that I do not deserve. Schindler is a hero that was able to act surrounded by the Nazis while I'm in the comfort of an air-conditioned office in this incredible country, Canada. My name is Steve Maman, father of six, ranging from a 22-month-old to a 22-year-old McGill graduate. I was born to Morocco, a Muslim country where the heritage of Morocco is what made me, what made us, my family, who we are, how we think, how we act, and how we react. Without my Jewish Moroccan Canadian education and identity, I could not have done what I have done until today. In order to truly believe and remain pure to the mission, I headed in Iraq. I had to be connected, body and soul, to three different concepts. No borders, no race, and no religion. Morocco is the best country, the best example in the world of a Muslim country, in my opinion, where the King Mohammed V, may God bless him, King Hassan II, his father, and his father as well, King Mohammed V, have all made sure to make the Jews feel at home, protected, and attached to the country, to the constitution. They made sure that a great deal of protection and assistance was there tr throughout the generations. <laughs> Let's not forget that Jews were in Morocco over a thousand years ago, way before Islam was there and existed. This shows that Jews and Muslims lived and can live peacefully, and the model of Morocco, it could have. It should have served to the rest of the world, as well as to the Middle East, as an example of Muslims and Jews being able to live without genocide, without any problems. Sadly, it did not. No matter what, I stand in admiration to my king, for he makes sure that the tradition of his ancestors, uh, his father and his grandfather, and, and the previous kings before that, take care and continue to take care of such a small community until today. A Jew can travel safely and feel at home in Morocco, where there's 600 saints that are buried that get vis visited every year by tens of thousands of people. I am the president of CYCI, the liberation of Christians and Yazidi children of Iraq. I founded this organization on the 25th of June in order to help the innocents that are part of the genocide happening right in front of our eyes. It's happening in Iraq. Everybody sees it. We see it live. We see it on our phones literally immediately. People with iPhones could watch videos instantly. With Androids, with Blackberries, there's no more excuses. There are no delays in the information. And you know what? ISIS makes it a, makes it a reason for you to be able to see those videos in high quality. We saw it when they drowned the six people or seven people in that cage, in that pool. They had cameras that were inside those pools in order for you to see exactly how it happens and to see the suffering. ISIS makes sure to use every single media available out there. They do not want to hide what they do. They want you to know what they do. In other words, the excuses used for letting six million Jews die at the hands of the Nazis from 1939 to 1940, 1945 cannot be used today. We've heard in the past, we didn't know. Had we known, we would have acted. Everybody knew. Nobody wanted to act. It's repeating itself again today. We know and we see it. I said to myself, on August 3rd, 2014, the genocide started in Shingal, in Kurdistan. We are now September 2015. Where is everyone? What are they waiting for? It's still continuing. One year has gone by, and then another year is going to go by if we don't act. Are we waiting for another six long years? Are we waiting for another few millions to die? 
Eight months ago, I got up and I said enough. I'm not gonna stand idle looking at this happening again. I decided to imitate one of my heroes. And actually I have two heroes, we're gonna talk about them. One being Oscar Schindler, and the other being the government of Canada. Prime Minister Stephen Harper, and National Defense Minister Jason Kenney. For they stand for truth and not for the majority as all the other world leaders do. Oscar Schindler didn't have to put himself in that position. He didn't need to risk anything. He was pretty wealthy, he was comfortable, he could have just walked away. Instead, he acted. Against all odds, he acted and he succeeded. He saved 1,200 uh, 1200 Jews from the hands of the Nazis, which today are about 10,000 worth. He was criticized, criticized in the media, he was criticized in the news, but he was criticized by who, is the question. By spectators, by people who actually just look on, criticized, but yet they do nothing, they remain silent. Yazidis and Christians being held in the caliphate, I want you to know, CYCI stands with you. All my supporters stand with you. Know that CYCI will make the world stand with you. Know that even if the world has forgotten you, even if some of your own so-called representatives in Kurdistan and Iraq have, cho have chosen politics over the urgency of saving you, CYCI and its volunteers that are in Canada, USA, in Germany, are working around the clock for you through our Facebook page, our Twitter account, and all available social media out there. We will, not, we will not be deterred by politics and journalists that need you to stay there, to remain hostages, so that they have what to talk about in the news at the six o'clock uh, evening news. If you get liberated, obviously they have nothing to talk about anymore. So obviously they don't like CYCI. They don't like me so much. I guess the media in Quebec is the one that doesn't like me too much. The rest of the world, I guess, is in love with CYCI. For some reason, Quebec isn't. You're gonna have to ask that to them. You need to know we will not be deterred, okay? Why did I decide to help and create CYCI? Listen, listen well. It's, it's, it was asking me many, many times, and today I have time. I'm not con constrained to a four-minute interview. I'll tell you why. Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, which is buried in the city of Uman, a place that I visited 20 or 21 times during the Rosh Hashanah holiday. A famous rabbi that passed away in the, around the early 1800s. He said that he'd bodedut, the prayer in seclusion. Doesn't have to be in a synagogue, in a church, in a mosque, with people. It could be in your car, it could be walking, it could be sitting in a bus. That prayer is the most powerful prayer and it's the one that God gets the most pleasure out of listening to. That's what he says. And I always said to myself, the most beautiful prayers since, since earth was created must have come probably from Auschwitz, in my opinion. The cries, the pain, the feeling of being abandoned, the hope of being liberated from such horrors must have made up the deepest and most sincere and truthful prayers that God ever listened to. I wanted to help these innocents in Iraq because these prayers in seclusion these prayers of distress came again, sadly, some seven years later. This time, instead of coming from Europe, they came from Mosul. They came from what they call the Caliphate. This time it came from children and women. Some of them boys and husbands who were beheaded in front of their sisters and their mothers. Prior you would think that was enough. They beheaded them, they suffered enough. Now you can go. No, we're not done with you. We're going to take you, we're going to take you along with us, and you're gonna become now sex slaves. Starting from nine years old, um, you're going to become a sex slave. You're going to be 
available to whoever wants to take you in the caliphate. They're being held in cages. I have testimonies. We took out 130 people until now. And I have... Yeah. I have testimonies of people. I have fingerprints of people that we took out. I have signatures. I have witnesses. I have Ismail Mirza that was here before me. We work together on the ground there. His people work with us. They handle the paperwork. They handle the interviews with the people we take out. People tell us they were held in cages. They were beaten and underfed. They're being raped, some of them 30 times a day. They're being resold numerous times. Some of them have virgin reconstruction procedures. So they can get, again, resold to another person who wants to buy them, I guess, in the, around, the, in, around the slave markets. Apparently, they, they command more money when they're virgins again. They're being treated like cattle. Basically, listen well, they're being killed every single day without their soul leaving their body. Can you imagine what it is to die every day? Every day you die, every day you die, and your soul, it just won't leave your body. Why? Why all this suffering and injustice in 2015, these 3,000 innocents have to live by? People, you can act now, or you can remain spectators. There's only two options on the table. That's all there are. Either you act, or you're a spectator. I addressed this to the world, not just to you that are here today, or to Canadians, to the media that are here. I address the world, and know one thing. Canada, Canada has acted. Canada, our government, has traveled to Iraq a few months ago. Minister Kenny, in the presence of Prime Minister Harper, they traveled there, they donated and they pledged $140 million to the humanitarian aid. I'd like to see more people, more governments do what Prime Minister Harper did. Canada has shown how it protects Israel in the face of the international community. Every Jew of Canada, every Jew of this world has a debt attached to the soul towards Prime Minister Harper. Never in the history of Israel since its creation has there been somebody who went to the bat the way Prime Minister Harper has gone for Israel. It would be a shame not to support him in the upcoming elections. I end my speech with a phrase of the Talmud. One that is a duty to every human being living on earth to teach to your families, to your friends. Tell them. Talmud says, one who saves a life saves a world.